Greetings and salutations on this October 26, 2009. Bulletin Man's second attempt at a broadcast. There's one already up on YouTube, folks, but there's a little scattered brain in that one. And I just thought you deserved a better effort. And the Bulletin Man's got a lot to say. It's very important that I get it just right. So over the weekend in Jefferson County, outside of Bash's Nursing Center, which is across the highway from Timber Ridge Resort, formerly Jefferson Resort, um, there was a shooting. A 70-year-old man went down there and shot his uh, estranged wife who had went to court in Jefferson County uh, the week before and got an ex parte. Now, Bulletin Man's been the uh, victim of this ex parte scam quite a long time. And it, what happened down there, the ex parte just basically threw gasoline on an already very explosive situation. And that's what these ex parte orders do. Uh, the orders of protection, ex parte means one party. So uh, basically you can walk into a courtroom, a courthouse, anywhere in America, whether you're male or female, and tell the judge a sob story and the judge is going to order whoever your aggrieved person, whoever you're against, to uh, basically he's going to rob him of everything or her of all their rights, of all their assets, and this is done overnight. Uh, ex parte means one party, so the other guy don't even have a chance to put on his side of the story. And what happened then? There could have been prevented if the family court system would go out of business. As simple as that. We already have laws on the books for assault cases, for battery. Um, so if there's been an assault or there's been a battery, then you go arrest the batterer or the assaulter and you put them in jail. Uh, this whole thing of the court of pre-crime is bogus, is un-American, and causes people to get shot. Now what happened, this man goes down there and tries to kill his ex-wife, shooting other people as well, or soon to be ex-wife, not even ex-wife, he's shooting other employee, employees down there, he's enraged, and why, I really don't know personally his situation, but I would bet that he's a little upset that he can't get to his bank account, uh, that all his rights have been stripped from him, they probably stole what other guns they could probably get their hands on when they serve as ex parte to him. So the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department goes down there and plugs this old man after he shoots the, the woman. And you know what? I don't think they would have had to kill him. I haven't really been in that situation, so you want to shoot to kill, I guess. But, you know, I watch a lot of movies on TV or whatever, and I always see James Bond shooting a gun out of her hand or shooting him in the knees or something like that or with rubber bullets or with tasers or something to be able to bring this person down. So, you know what, I don't really, um, I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I haven't been in that situation, so I really wouldn't know what to do, but I think they could have took this man down some other way. I thought that he had just initially wounded his wife I understand that she has passed on, so in light of that, I mean, my, my, my mind's made up a little bit differently. But the problem with that is that you have uh, how many shots were fired. You know, uh, for 15 years I've been doing this just about folks, and you know, I have no communication with law enforcement because I speak the truth, and they're mad at me, and they don't want to tell me anything. Um, but I don't know how many shots were fired, what kind of guns they were firing. Uh, we don't even know whether or not this man actually shot his wife. Uh, maybe the renegade deputy shot, or who knows. Uh, but the whole thing could have been prevented if the ex parte orders would not have been in effect. Uh, today is a birthday of a dear uh, Bulletin fan uh, in Evansville, Indiana. Her son, uh, his birthday is today, and his name is Wyatt. And uh, Wyatt Fitzpatrick, I believe is his name. Or Fitz, yeah, I think it's Fitzpatrick. Or maybe Fitzgerald. Anyway, well, God bless you, Wyatt. I love you. I put up the first video, and I'm pretty sure he's probably seen that. But I wanted to say uh, happy birthday, young man, today on this uh, uh, October 26, 2009. And a really good folks is uh, uh, Joey, Jody. Uh, I can't remember the mom's name either, um, right off the top of my head. But they're really good people, and they got a huge family. So uh, God bless them. We love them. Uh, that's the way all American families should be. I think they have like six, seven, eight kids. Uh, so that's a great thing, you know. It's keep on going on. Keep on keeping on. 
Uh, we love you and we do appreciate you stopping in for this Bolt of Man video broadcast. The audit is out in Crystal City. I hear rumors and rumblings of stuff going on with that. Uh, I also hear with um, Forrest Weggy, the Jefferson County prosecutor, is in a bunch of trouble. And uh, and we also heard about Tim Meadows getting arrested the other night for DWI and Imperial. Tim, a Democrat representative, and, and he was uh, he was arrested. I have to look into that situation. You know, and another thing that upsets me about the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department, Ralph Brown, and I've known Ralph all my life. You know, I mean, so I was a little kid. We used to have breakfast with Ralph down at Theodore Oil's restaurant. But they tell me that they will not give me information who's in their jail and what they're in there for because they don't want to incriminate the, no one who hasn't been charged yet. But when a state representative gets arrested, and even though he is a member of their own party, and I, you know, I applaud him for not seeing the party favorites there yet, um, then they, they release that information, but they won't tell me who's in their jail what they're in there for. Bolton Man is expecting to run in a few bucks, and uh, I was going to set the captives free. I'm going to bail everybody out of Jefferson County. I can possibly bail out. Because there's a lot of people in that jail who do not belong in there. It's a racket, folks. It's a criminal racket. It's a criminal criminal syndicate. And then you got people running around murdering folks. And I want to know who the cops are who shot the old man down in DeSoto. Um, we know who the victims are. We know who was the shooters. And, and we know who the judge who, who signed off on that ex parte is. But we, and that's Judge Troy Cordona, by the way. But we don't, um, and Troy, how do you feel about that? You, do you feel any sense of guilt there that perhaps maybe you, you fueled that situation? I don't know. Do, do you, Troy? I don't know. But anyway, we know that. We know who the judge is involved, and, but we don't know who the cops are. So we have more murderers walking the streets of Jefferson County. I know three of them are already walking the streets of Jefferson County. They're not cops. No, I have four. One, one of them is a cop, too. And, that's another great thing, too. I heard about the other day about Ed Kemp. Ed Kemp's stepson. I got in a little trouble, I understand. I'll tell you about that tomorrow. Ed Kemp is like uh, one of the uh, county commissioners there in Jefferson County, or executives, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, Chucky is the county executive. Not you, Chuck. <laughs> Chuck Banks, God love him. He always thinks that he's complaining and no one's giving him any respect because he was the presiding commissioner. Now he wants to be called the county executive, and he's, he's got a good point. He really does. In my book, Chuck, you are the county executive. I love you. So we'll see you. I appreciate you stopping by, and as always, ask you to tell a friend about the one and only Bulletin Man. See you.